Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. If it's your first time, my name is Tiffany, you can call me Tiffy. And just a little bit about me and my channel, I love first and foremost fashion. If you go and look through my videos, you'll see a bunch of hauls and things like that. That's kind of like my thing and I love doing that. I'm also crazy about fitness and health and lifestyle. So I've done a couple of vlogs just from my travels. That's another thing. I travel a lot. So that's kind of like what my channel is about. So um, if you like what you see in this video, please take the time out to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So having said all of that, this video is going to kind of be a little bit more towards the lifestyle portion of my channel. And <sighs> I've been kind of struggling with going back and forth as to whether or not I wanted to come clean about this. I'm just being completely transparent right now. And, um, and it's only because of some things that I've experienced. I'm still fairly new to YouTube. I've been doing this a little bit over a year. And I know how people can be. And it kind of opens your eyes. But it also makes you stronger at the same time. And I want to come clean about this because from my heart, I really feel like one of the biggest issues that we have in this world is social media. I think that social media can be a blessing and I think it can be a curse. You know, for me, I go on social media and I get inspired. I look at people and I have like a, I use it almost as Pinterest now. Like I have, if I see a girl with a purse that I like, I save it to a fashion collection. You know, you can save things now on Instagram that you like. Girls that work out, I save the workouts and I do them later. Um, things that I strive for, like cars and things like that. So I get off social media and I feel, you know, inspired. But not everyone does that. Some, especially our youth. And, you know, What's kind of sad is it's not even youth anymore. It's kind of everybody. You know, people go on social media and they look at people portraying perfect lives, perfect lifestyles, perfect love, perfect, you know, face and butt and abs and arms and whatever. And, you know, it's so easy to get caught up in thinking about what you don't have or what you lack or not feeling pretty enough or you know, just not feeling enough. And, you know, when I decided that I wanted to do a YouTube channel and when I decided to kind of enter into this whole influencer world, one of the best pieces of advice that I have ever gotten was to be true, to be authentic, to be transparent, and that's what I'm doing today. And the biggest reason I'm doing that is because, you know, I started this at like an older age. I just had my 37th birthday. And I don't want young girls to look at me and feel bad about themselves. I want them to know that if you have something that you don't like about yourself, if there's something that you can do to change, change it, change it. If you feel... If you, it's okay to have insecurities without being an insecure person. I think that it is normal as human beings, man, men and women both, to have insecurities, to have flaws and embracing them. It's, you know, sometimes it's not about having those things, it's what you, what you do with that, you know, because it's just a normal thing. And so I wanted to come clean about this. And... God didn't give me a perfect nose, you know, and there's certain things and certain angles that I look back on when I'm editing my videos or when I'm, you know, looking back at my pictures, like I hate my profile. I don't want to say hate, but it's just like, first of, first of all, I don't hate anything about myself. I learned to love myself. It took me a long time, but I've learned to love myself completely. But going back to what I said, it's okay to have insecurities about yourself without being insecure, okay? So you gotta understand that. So I don't necessarily like my profile. And I've noticed that, you know, in pictures and stuff, 
you know, I have to force myself to do side poses and things like that because certain angles I just don't like. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, getting my nose done has been something that I've wanted for a long, 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 long time, you guys. And to be honest with you, I actually had a consultation once before with a doctor. Dr. Richard Davis in Miami. My husband and I went, I had the consultation and he did this computerized digital um, makeup of what my nose could look like after the surgery was done. And I looked at that and I was like, you know what? It kind of scared me. I was like, I'll keep the damn snout I have because I didn't like it. I didn't like it and it scared me. And your face is your face. There's no hiding your face. And I didn't want to have surgery and come out of it like not liking my nose even more. You know what I'm saying? So, and it took me, honestly, it took me a year to even get into this doctor for a consultation. Like he's that well known and he's that good. And I didn't like it. So I didn't do it. And that was four years ago. And I think if I can be honest with myself, why I'm kind of why I started exploring the idea of getting a nose job again was just like starting my YouTube channel and like really upping my Instagram game and looking at myself and I was just like you know what I'm just gonna go for it again and so I started doing research on doctors um my best friend and my sister and I have had a lot of dialogue back and forth. They've actually helped me choose a doctor. My very first choice was a doctor in Beverly Hills by the name of Dr. Gavami. I believe it's Gavami or Gavani. Um, I'll look it up. But anyway, he does a really, really, really good job with noses. And not just one particular type of nose, but like all noses. I looked on his page and sometimes if you're, my sister gave me a really good piece of advice. She was like, instead of looking at their page and looking at everything that you like, find, try to find what you don't like. And that just gave me a different perspective. Like, okay, that's a really good idea. You know, and if there's like some noses where you're just like, mm, I don't like that, you know, then that really helped me make my decision. This particular doctor, Dr. Gavarmi in Beverly Hills, I looked on his page and I don't think there was a nose that I did not like. I liked every single one of those noses. So, um, can't get in with him because it literally takes like two years for a consultation and then an entire year after that for the actual surgery. So I was like, you know, that's a little bit long. Like I'm okay with waiting a few months, but I don't want to wait a year, two years, and then another year for the surgery. That's like three years. So I started looking at other other doctors, and then I narrowed it down to three doctors. And then I kept sending pictures of the work of the doctors to my friends, to my best friend and my sister, because I like to have like others' opinions. And I think it was Dr. William Pertus and Dr. I think it was Kasiri at the Nadiri Center. And the last doctor was Dr. Um, Zumalin in Beverly Hills. And we just kind of was looking at noses and the three of us collectively, um, without even like asking one another, we were like, we all like this doctor. Like, it was just like a no brainer. Like we love that doctor. So I chose him. And I had my consultation with him via Skype because he's in Beverly Hills and I'm in Florida. Um, prior to the Skype interview, I sent him a bunch of pictures of my nose, different angles without any makeup on, just with a, like a blank wall, just so he can get a clear idea of what my nose looked like. And during the consultation process, he pretty much was looking at those pictures the entire time and trying to get an idea of you know, what I wanted from my nose. So it, it really, you know, it didn't last very long. The consultation didn't, we got off the phone and then I got some information um, from his office manager. I believe her name is Chris, Kristen. And she sent me some information and pricing. So I guess, you know, that's why you have to do a consultation. And I noticed, you know, I've watched a lot of people do videos on YouTube and I 
some people didn't go over cost and I understand now because just because it costs this for me doesn't mean it's going to cost you know the same for someone else it just all depends on the needs of that person I know some people want to go um get their nose done for aesthetic reasons but sometimes there's some medical involved with that with deviated septums and breathing issues and things like that so you know if that's the case then it's going to cost you a little bit more um for me first of all going to beverly hills for anything is going to cost you more money the total cost of my surgery is going to be fifteen thousand eight hundred dollars so yeah, I find that's kind of expensive because the national average from just all the other doctors that I've researched, it's been anywhere between eight to twelve thousand dollars. But this is the doctor that I liked, you know, and so I'm gonna go with it. And I feel pretty good about my choice. So yeah, I'm super, super, super nervous. We today is uh, June 2nd, I am scheduled to leave here on the 10th for my, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I leave here on the 10th, my surgery is on the 11th, and I've already stopped doing anything with aspirin or anything that's going to thin my blood like vitamin E and stuff like that. They sent me over a whole list of what not to do right now, including drinking, which sucks because I love having a glass of wine at night. Um... So I've been doing that. They also have been encouraging me to drink like smoothies and with kale and stuff like that. So that helps with, um, I guess, bruising and things like that. And, you know, yeah, that's kind of like where I'm at right now. Emotionally, I feel, you know, I'm excited to get it done. And I'm also really, really, really nervous. And with every passing day, I become more and more nervous. I'm nervous about, of course, going under general anesthesia. I'm nervous about, gosh, am I gonna love it? Like, am I gonna love it? I just wanna love it. Like, I wanna feel good about what I've done. I wanna feel good about my decision doing this. I mean, I've thought about it, I've pondered about it for so long and I just want to make sure that I'm actually doing the right thing and I, that I've made the right choice and um, I'm I'm not going to renege on it I mean I've already paid the deposit I've already got my pre-op blood work done my EKG just to make sure that I'm good to go for the anesthesia and I'm ready and it's so easy to talk yourself out of it at this point but I'm going to go through it through with it you guys so last thing I want to go over with you is just kind of like what I want done to my nose um, so I think the biggest thing with my nose that I don't like is the length um, in my profile so when I turn to the side I feel like I have a long nose and it droops down instead of you know being turned up so what I would like to see happen is um to shorten this and just lift it up just a little bit i think i want my bridge to be a little bit more straight it's just kind of like a little hump right here i just wanted a little bit more straighter of a slope and then i feel like i have a really wide nostril flare like when i smile like my nostrils go way back like that and then it's just, and then, then this goes down. And then when you look at this angle, it's a little bit crooked, my nose, but that's not like a big issue for me because I know proportion is kind of hard, but I feel like my nose just goes down so far and my nostrils flare back and one nostril is bigger than the other. And certain things that I do, like I look at myself in pictures and I smile like this and it's like, oh. I, you know, I don't want a small nose. I have way too long of a face for a small nose. That would look just weird. I just want, you know, an, uh, my nose, more, most important thing about my nose that I want is for this part right here to just be shortened and lifted a little bit. So we went over a plan 
Then when I go to him on the 10th, we'll go over another plan. We also talked about maybe, I think he's gonna maybe shave some of this down, um, this part right here. Can't see myself in the middle. This part right here, shaving it down so it's a little thinner than what it is. So I just, I'm gonna tell him, please don't have me looking like, you know, Latoya Jackson or somebody, but I don't think he will. This guy is an artist. He's been doing this for a long time. Everybody, everyone's nose is unique to their own face. And um, so I think he's really good at that. Not putting the same nose on everybody. Like that's so important. So anyways, you guys, I think I've covered pretty much everything in this video. And, you know, I know that some people are going to be like, you're crazy for doing this or you don't need it or... You know, you do need it, but, you know, you should be glad with what God gave you. And I thought about all of those things. I've been thinking about just being happy with it for a lot of years. But I made the decision on my own to go ahead and just do it anyway because obviously, you know, it's something that bugs me. And God has granted me with the ability to be able to do this and I'm so happy and grateful and I've done my research I've done everything that I can do on my end and at this point I'm just gonna leave it in his hands the good Lord you guys say a prayer for me be looking out for the video I'm gonna be posting um, hopefully they will let me film while I'm in office and things like that so um, like I said keep me in your prayers and I will keep you posted and I'll try to be as informative as I possibly can. If you're considering plastic surgery, you guys always, always, always do research after research after research. If you have to fly out of town because you can't find a doctor good enough in your area, then that is just what you have to do. But you make sure that the doctor is an expert in whatever it is you want to get done. Don't go to a boob doctor for your nose and vice versa. You know, you want to go to someone that specializes in that. This doctor that I'm going to does nothing but noses and face, primarily noses. So he does nothing with the body, which kind of sucks because I wanted to get my boobs done and just knock it all out and with one wop, but you know, it is what it is. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. And if you could please take a little bit of time. My name is Tiffany Cleef. That is my name on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Um, and on there, I'm always posting inspirational things fashion-wise.